Well, I wasn't actually planning to talk. Um, and I appreciate Senator Slama's comments, but I guess since, like a lot of things, when you don't intend to be part of a conversation, but you don't get to choose whether or not you're the target or subject of sexual assault, you don't get to choose whether you're the target or subject of uh, some sort of, I guess, political maligning for grandstanding purposes. Um, Senator Halloran, I, I guess I, I don't know what to say to what you said yesterday, but I would say, again, you missed the point. You're saying that you owe me an apology for inserting me accidentally into this uh, sentence. You're missing the harm that that action caused to everyone else around us. Senator Islam, I couldn't say it better than you, so I won't even try. But the actions have consequences. Yes, our speech is protected in here, and our speech is protected everywhere, honestly, but they still have consequences. And sometimes those consequences are the harm that your speech causes. Now, you want to rely on the fact that what you were reading is a transcript of a book that you're saying is taught in schools, and you did correctly point out that this is a book about an individual who had, who was raped at the age of 18 uh, and had traumatic results of that. What you are missing is the value of her sharing her story and the value that people derive from reading that story. And what you did in this conversation about obscenity and prurient interests is took a story and inserted your colleagues into it for effect, which in itself you created a new work, one that is far more prurient than the original content you were discussing. Because you, in essence, sexualized the people you work with for some effect. And that's what we're talking about. The protected speech and the value derived from these books that you don't like is that they have other context and surrounding value to people as a whole. The value of reading about somebody's traumatic experience to someone who went through a traumatic experience is that it helps them cope. It helps them move on. It helps those of us who have not experienced a traumatic experience to empathize with them. So of course I would suggest to you, read that whole book. Read the rest of it. Find out what is the value there. Because you're not deriving empathy from the paragraphs that you've read. You are deriving some sort of other value for you. And I, I'm, I'm not going to suggest what it is, but it does tread close to the prurient. So just, I appreciate everyone's comments. Senator Blood, I don't want to leave you out. You said some really good things I did write down. I did have my head down, Senator Blood. I apologize, but I was taking notes. Um, but one of the things that one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Inspired me to stand up was, I think Senator Blood said it, men often don't come forward. And I'm don't feel bad for me. But I don't want you to think that I'm ashamed of what's happening here. I'm proud of the work we do. I'm proud of the work that I do, and I'm proud of the stances I take. And Senator Halloran, I will stand up and fight for your right to exercise your freedom of speech, even when it is offensive to me and my friends and family. So I hope that we can all move on, but I hope we've all have actually taken an opportunity to learn what is and is not obscene and what is the value of learning about people, other people's experience. So thank you, fellow colleagues, and thank you, Mr. President.